is given to us as 4y plus 6x minus x squared minus y squared. We're asked to find max min. It can have both, or it can have one, or it can have none. So in step number one, I have to determine all these. So let's determine them. fx, I differentiate with respect to y, to x keeping y fixed. This is fixed, it's 0. I'm differentiating with respect to x, so this is 6. I'm differentiating with respect to x, so this is negative 2x. I'm differentiating with respect to x, nothing. Okay, fxx. When I differentiate this with respect to x, I get negative 2. fxy. When I differentiate this with respect to y, I get 0. Now, fy. x is fixed. When I differentiate this, I get 4. When I differentiate this, I get 0. When I differentiate this, I get 0. When I differentiate this, I get negative 2y. fyy. When I differentiate this with respect to y, I get negative 2. Of course, fxy will be 0. So when I, fyx, I meant to write, to say. When I differentiate this with respect to x, they have to be the same. fxy, fyx. So the first step is complete. Now in step two, I have to solve this system. And the system is fx, 6 minus 2x equals 0, and fy, 4 minus 2y equals 0. And the question is, um, <clears throat> does, is this, does it have a solution? Yes, it does. So when I solve this for x, I get x equals 3. When I solve this for y, I get x, the y equals 2. So the ordered pair, the so-called a comma b exists. I found only one. So that was step two. I got this ordered pair as the solution. And now in step three, I have to find D. Calculate this number for the D test. So the D test says that I have to evaluate fxx at AB. But fxx is negative two. I can't plug in anything. So this is just negative two. Multiplied it by fyy evaluated at ab, but fyy is also negative 2. That's fine. So I have this product negative 2 times negative 2, now minus. fxy evaluated at ab, but that's 0. And squared doesn't make any difference. So this number is 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. 4 minus 0 is 4. So I'm back to analyzing the situation. Is d 0? No. Is d less than 0? No. So I'm here now. So d is a positive number. All I have to do before I conclude what type of point this is, is look at fxx. But fxx is negative 2. So it's the first situation with d positive and fxx negative. So this is a maximum. So 3 comma 2 gives a max. What is it? No problem. I can find it. I'll tell you what it is. f of 3 comma 2 will be 4 multiplied by 2 plus 6 multiplied by 3 minus 3 squared, which is 9, minus 2 squared, which is 4. So I get 8 plus 18 and minus 13. 18 minus 13 is 5. 5 plus 8 is 13. And that is the maximum. Relative maximum, of course. OK, so let's look at an application. All the steps are the same. But now the function that we are given will have significant, will be significant for a particular model or significant in a particular situation, productivity, profit, or cost, or 
revenue or whatever else. Okay, so let's uh, maximize, let's say, profit. Number 18 on page 547. So we're given a function. It's p of a comma n. And it's given to us negative 5 a squared minus 3 n squared plus 48 a minus 4 n plus <clears throat> 2 a n and plus 290. So p profit. And it says in millions of dollars, of course. OK. A is the amount spent on adver advertising. A dollars on ads, advertising. In millions of dollars as well. N is the number of items sold. N, number of items sold. OK. So they say, um, Humphreys Medical Supply finds that its profit, P in millions of dollars, is given by this function, where A and, and N, we know what they are. Find the maximum value of P and the values of A and N at which it occurs. So find the maximum of this function and where it happens, what A and what N. OK. So like before, it's a function of with two variables. I have to conduct the d-test. In order to conduct the d-test, I have to find PA, PN, PAA, PNN, and PAN. OK. So PA, differentiating with respect to A, N is fixed. Negative 10A, this is fixed. Goodbye, plus 49, oh, 48, of course. Uh, and there is another A here. So when I differentiate, I get plus 2N. So negative 10A plus this is fixed. I differentiate with respect to A. And this is negative 4N. So it goes away and plus 2N. That's it. So uh, Pn, okay. Pn, this is gone. This is negative 6n. This is gone. This is minus 4. This is plus 2a. And this is gone. Now Paa. I differentiate this with respect to a again. Gone, negative 10. Pnn. I differentiate this again with respect to n, negative 6. And finally, p, a, n. I differentiate this with respect to n, and I get 2. This is gone, this is gone. With respect to n, it's 2. In step 2, I have to create this system. And the system has p, a equals 0, and p, sub n equals 0. Okay. Negative 10a plus 48 plus 2n equals 0. Negative 6n minus 4 plus 2a equals 0. A system of two linear equations in two variables. I have to clean it up. I have to rearrange it. I have to do a lot of work before I start. OK. Of course, I will move 48 to the other side. So I have negative 10a plus 2n equals negative 48. And negative, uh, I need to put it in the same exact order, one under the other. So I want to put plus 2a because I started with a in the first one. It doesn't matter, but I started with a in the first one. I don't want to have to write it again. So this is 2a and then uh, minus 6n. And I move 4 to the other side, which is 4. OK, I will divide uh, both by uh, 2. So 
the system becomes negative 5a plus n equals negative 24, and a minus 3n equals 2. Okay? So at this point, I will have to decide what to do. I either eliminate a, multiplying this by 5, or I eliminate n multiplying the first one by 3. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to multiply the second one by 5. Okay. So the system is negative 5a plus n equals negative 24. 5a minus 15n equals 10. As planned, a goes away. Uh, negative 15 plus 1 is negative 14n, and this is negative 14. So it appears that n equals 1. I have to go back and check in a minute. If n is 1, then a will be 5. So I claim that the system uh, has the following solution, a comma n, so 5 comma 1. To make sure, I'll go back and check. So here is the system, a is 5, and n is 1. I just want to make sure. So negative 50 plus 48, negative 50 plus 48 is negative 2, negative 2 plus 2 is 0, yes. Uh, negative 6 minus 4 is negative 10, 2 times 5 is 10, yes. I have no doubt that 5 comma 1 is the solution. At this point, I have to determine D. And remember D, it's FXX at AB. So it's P A A at 5 comma 1 multiplied by um, P N N at 5 comma 1 minus P A N at 5 comma 1 but squared. And now we're going to calculate everything. So where is my PAA? My PAA is here. Oh, I, nice. Negative 10. My PNN at any value in any ordered pair is still negative 6. Uh, PAN is um, 2 no matter what. So then minus 2 squared. Okay, fine. So this is 60 and minus 4, which is 56. So D indeed is a positive number. When D is a positive number, I know there is either a max or a min. All I have to look at is FXX. FXX is this, which is negative 10. Therefore, 5 comma 1 indeed gives a maximum. Of course, a relative maximum. So in order to determine the relative maximum, all I have to do is go back. Where is my function? Where is my function? I lost my function. No, I found it. So negative 5 multiplied by a squared minus 3 multiplied by 1. I'm not going to write it plus 48 multiplied by 5, minus 4 times 1, which is 4, and plus 2 times n, which is 2, multiplied by 5, so that's 10, and plus 290. Okay, so let's see what we get as the maximum. So P of 5, 1. So this is 25 times negative 5 is negative 125. And this is minus 3 plus, um, I think it's 240. Yes. Uh, and then plus 6 and plus 290. And now I just became lazy. Negative 125. Oh, okay. Negative 128, of course. Plus 246 and plus 290. And this is 408 millions. 
Any questions? Okay, so um, let's also write um, at A equals 5 million. And one was 1,000 units. And that's where the maximum happens. Any questions for me?